Hey guys, Luna here and welcome back to Hive Swap Fensim. We just completed another volume in the last episode of this. And now we're on to volume 13 of Fate and Fortune and Fashion. Blah, 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 friendship, blah. And so we actually have two friends that we're going to do here. So it's one is Boulder, the Olive Blood. Which I'm going to just quickly write down their names. And Bull, Bure, Lamati, Olive Blood, Olive Blood, and the other being Stelsa as yet, Teal Blood. This is our, I think this is our second Teal Blood, which is, or maybe first Teal Blood, I don't, I don't remember. It's definitely been a while. Oh, I gotta close my mouth. Um, but or, the Olive Blood. You just aren't feeling it today. You're getting more and more of these gray knights recently. Knights were the call in the streets, that infinite ramble for companionship, that sound of exhaustion, that's... The sound, right, infinite ramble for companionship just sounds exhausting and meaningless. We had days like this back on Earth, too, when getting out of bed just didn't seem worth it. The sun is just beginning to slip under the horizon, and usually this would be the sign to rise and shine, or rise in dark. But you, all you've managed to do so far as this evening is make yourself some coffee. You recently, recently mentioned to Dagora that you drink incense, and he was so disgusted that he gave you a coffee machine. He claimed that it was an old one he doesn't use anymore, but it still has a price tag on it. <laughs> on the table sits a palm husk Konya had taken off a dead kid, especially for you, and cradled in your hand is a mug scallier scent. It looks like she painted it herself. There's a white blob on one side that you think it's supposed to be Lady. Even wearing a, the hoodie Malik gave you to cut the evening chill. You're all your all your wrapped up in the warm embrace of your friend's goodwill, safe and sound. But deep inside you festers something. A gnawing existential dissatisfaction. The classic angst that philosophers wrote about. Your mom husk chimes and you pick it up lazily. What, another rando just trying to slide into your DMs? Sorry, folks, you just don't have time for that anymore. You are a friendship connoisseur, a summer of the rarest and mythical vintages. You unlock the screen to find a mess. I'm not certain that this line is secure. Actually, I'm positive that it isn't, but I'm risking contact because it is imperative that we speak. I'm sending you the rendezvous coordinates. If you wouldn't mind coming any time after the sun has set. I realize this is unorthodox, but please believe me when I tell you this is not a trick or a trap. I have an important information regarding your place on Arteria. You attempt to rela a reply to the message, but there isn't a cursor anywhere to input text. The, in fact, there doesn't even appear to be a message or app open on your phone. It's just a random text box floating around in the void. You barely have a chance to read it all, read through before it vanishes, and Google Maps opens with an address already programmed in it. It's close enough to walk to, which is great, because you're, you're using your soul and scutter belly still makes you a little nervous. You swallow the rest of your coffee and grab your shoes. GPS leads you to a shop you recognize. It's the cafe from your weird sort of date with Lanera. It's not too crowded at this time of day. The usual strolling crowd doesn't appear to be here. A couple trolls are sitting, there, sitting around sharing pots of tea. Cool. Fucking idiot. I especially say that I want the essence of Daigle, not whatever this garbage is. Oh, you know this person. It's been a, real, it's been a minute, hasn't it? Materia stands in front of the counter, shouting at the cat register. Whatever automaton system once this shop has apparently gotten her order on. What are you looking at, huh? This is absolutely none of your- Oh, it's you. Materia swiftly covers up her surprise, examining her sharp, perfectly shaped name. You look different. Better? Let's not exaggerate. I simply mean it. It simply meant you look less toss like toxic weight and more like 
run-of-the-grain grinder garbage. Tell Ateria that this- that it's good to see her too. Man, this really takes you back. You've been so simple back then. So unevolved. You were laser focused on a single desire, friendship. Now, well, you still like friends, you really do, but you also have like a car, a sweatshirt with somebody's sign on it. You moved up in the world. Fascinating. Oh, by the way, is she the one who summoned you here? Summoned you? You must be joking. I haven't spared a single solitary thought of you since you dragged your wretched carcass out of my hide. Absently, you pushed your hand into the pockets of your hoodie. Something crickles between your fingers. You put out a photo piece of note notebook paper. Okay, this definitely wasn't here in the- been in the air when you left your hide. You asked a couple people to cheat, but you definitely don't remember any of them getting close enough to slip something in your pocket. Huh. Only says two words. Out back. Man, should we go? Oh, go, go. Let's be real here. If you were ever going to refuse a suspicious invitation, you would have done it by now. You would have been drawn at the line of the vehicle theft or murder church or anime club. You can't resist a social engagement. Your tragic flaw. Okay, I guess. Enjoy yourself. Head back through a heated current, half expecting an alarm to ring. How do they keep people from just robbing stores here? Are there just like lasers and shit? You merge into a tidy little back garden. None of the plants here are the ones you recognize from Earth, but it's still nice. You crash the bridge over a slow flowing stream and find yourself looking down at the path that blooms into a bright, dizzying spiral. Maybe you're supposed to walk across it and plunge your place in the universe? Your contemplation would be inevitably cut off before it hits its climax because someone is sitting at the center of the spiral. She is small, a compact shape with her hair cut short and choppy around her chin, wearing a shapeless white dress, really more of a robe. I'm waiting for you. Thanks for coming. She speaks in a sage whisper. Low and full of air, but still low enough to hear across the path. You pick up your way carefully across the making sure not to mess it any of it up, treading only inside the lines. The girl gives you a small secretive smile. Name's Boulder. We ask her if this is her garden. Does she live here? It's nice, but it's not exactly out of balance. Actually, it looks like someone, some storm elements rolling in. You're probably going to get rain soon. Oh yeah, my rep, rep raccoon is right over under that tr under that tree. She smiles again, and you can't tell if she's messing around. In fact, she's entirely unreadable. Like her face is a totally reflective surface, and all you're seeing is the cloud sky and the garden. You can't tell if she feels about you at all. Would you like to sit down inside the circle, or she looks around like she's only just realizing she's at the center of the. Comp complicated geometric pattern. It doesn't matter. I only wanted to see if you would follow the path or trample through it. But you didn't either. You forged your, uh, you forged your own way while taking care to preserve that which has come before. You yeah. ask her what that means. Maybe nothing. I'm not sure. The wind tosses her hair and, and the clouds chase each other across the sky. If the rain comes, it will come soon. Balder continues to look at you as you shift awkwardly and shiver, pushing your hands inside your hoodie. This is different than any other friend meetup you've had. Even with the others who purposely sought you out, there's a serenity to Balder that all the rest lack. And maybe that just this genus Zen is fuck the garden getting to you. Try to remember what Balder has said to you in the message that she somehow meant you make appear on your phone and then mutely self inflate that she had some sort of information for you about your place on Ontario or some shit like that. Did I say that? I guess I did. Hmm. I just suppose I wanted a chance to talk to you a bit before the end. I was starting to feel a little... jealous, maybe? Right. You guess everyone's going about on the funny dummy lean robot who's been prowling the countryside. No, oh, that's not it. Though I'm sure that you, I'm sure you're very funny. I just wanted a chance to talk to you, someone who is adrift in the swell of fate and the whims of the paradox. Paradox? You don't know anything about paradoxes. Well, you know what they are, you just don't see why they're relevant. 
Yes. Helidaxes are elegant by their very nature. It's the essence of the nature that makes them so integral to the story. You shake your head. You're not built for this cosmic stuff. You're just an orphan from Earth with a quick, with quick fingers for spaceships and apparently vehicles. Boulda gives you another sly smile. Oh, quick fingers. You blush. You hadn't meant to add that as a dirty joke or anything. Also, your fingers are nowhere as quick as hers. She somehow has got a piece of paper in your pocket while you're standing in a cafe and she was back here. That's like reverse pickpocketing through astral projection. Boulder laughs. She stands and moves across the garden path, crawling the spiral so swiftly and efficiently that she might as well be floating. She just over to, to one of the trees, pulling a coat down from where it's slung over a branch. Aw, I love, I love her outfit. It's a covers her from chin to ankles, coming together to form an olive green symbol on her chest. It looks like a question mark without the dots. A broad brimmed hat fishes and fishes up in some. So, so signs just a spiral. <laughs> I can't teach her actual projection, but pick it, pit pocket, pick pocketing is actually quite. Ideally, we'll need a third person to act as a mark, but I think we can make it work. A crime, huh? Uh, sure, let's do crime. This whole mess started with a theft of a spaceship, as if- And if Boulder is right about all that fate horseshit that was supposed to happen, so maybe you'll lean into it. Perfect. The first and most important aspect of the art of pick is staying unobtrusive. You think about mentioning that walking around in a great big coat and floppy hat is not the most unobtrusive thing you've ever seen, but you aren't the expert here. Also, you're an alien, so maybe you don't really have room to talk. Maybe you should just get a big coat like that yourself. You just love, love ripping looks off of all of your friends. Boda takes you through the basics of criminal sleight of hand, and on the whole, you aren't too bad. In fact, you think you might have a future in it if you weren't already on the clear path of professional friendshiper. You don't know what this has to do with her learning about you or teaching your place on this area, but it's fun and Boulder is a good, a good teacher. There's one thing this journey has taught you, it's that when something isn't actively destructive, let's just write that out. You don't think you'll be going around pickpocketing men and chumbles, enough of them already want to kill you, but it's good to have the skill on reserve and if you ever need cash fast and don't feel like hitting up any of your rich friends. I wonder if Boulder uses it for anything else besides for passing notes. Psst. My sources tell us me you've been on a terry for almost three pedigrees now. Uh, you have no idea how long pedigrees is, but the hell, sure. Impressive. No wonder. She trails off thoughtfully and shakes her head. So I'm guessing about three months. I wish she would say something with some substance to it instead of just some vague nonsense. Either, either three weeks or three months. Definitely, definitely not three years, because sweeps is like years. But at least she isn't threatening you with violence or trying to stick wires into you, so you're counting this uh, interaction successful so far. Also, you feel weirdly chilled out with Bordo. Sure, you want to be friends, but there's none of that stomach-churning, spine-bending desperation to make sure she likes you at whatever the cost. You feel more awake than you have in weeks. Man, you gotta learn to pickpocket in the garden behind a cafe more often than if this is what it does to your stress levels. <laughs> want to get something to eat. Or maybe just coffee, because that's what they serve you. Sure, you can use another caffeinated beverage. On top of that other caffeinated beverage you had earlier. Why not? You sleep when you're dead. If only. You follow her out of the garden and back into the cafe. Aha, who is this now? It's another friend. Oh, Jerry, you're still here. Of course I am, fool. You were back there for about ten minutes. Ten minutes? Wow, it felt like it way longer than that. I guess you underestimated the power of a good training montage. You introduce Alteria to Boulder with a cheerful earnestness of someone who has forgotten the systematic classism of the planet of which they are currently reside. Alteria stops you with an Aristotic sneer. 
stop, stop, before I have to stop you myself. I have to absolutely no desire to mix with those so low on the social ladder. What in the world could she have to offer to me? He shrug. Not sure. Maybe friendship? You know friendship is between people of different castes are possible. You've seen them happen. Regardless, you feel bad for exposing your new friend to the vaguely nonsensical abuses of your oldest. He turned back to Boulder to apologize and find her using coolly at Adair like she could do it all night. There's none of the fear of reverence of fa or false obedience that you've seen other low bloods display uh, to blooms. Yeah, or her eyes look dead. Instead, Boulder looks at Adair like she's a bug. Worst, a pebble that that she would just love to kick out of the way. Nice, nice to meet you in person, Miss Camille. I hear your GrubTube channel has been losing subscribers recently. I wonder why that is. Blue hits Atari's cheeks in an angry flush. I'm currently on hiatus. The old garbage was getting me- it was getting tired. There's so many imitators that my own context is starting to seem derivative. She gives one of her maniacal laughs, but it's a little less robust than usual. Man, the wild tundra of an internet fame is an arid battleground. In fact, I have a new feature in the works as we speak. She opens up the little vial she's been hang haggling with the cash register over earlier. Poison. I think the best and most expedient process would just to be dose my featured guest food and then hide the antidote somewhere in my hive. Unless you have another idea. He smiles slightly. Boulder smiles back, just as vicious. Great, have fun with that. While Boulder talks, her eyes start flicking to you from you to Arteria and down. Again, again, you Arteria down. It takes a couple go arounds before you realize what she saw with you. She keeps looking down at your hands, which are stuck in your hoodie pocket, exactly where you found the note Balder slipped in. Adair is carrying the bag that looks expensive and extremely gaunt, and you can see where the vial of poison sticking out. Oh man, you know what you have to do. When a, a group comes into the shop and pushes past the three of you, move in on Adair and slip a hand into her bag, bombing the smooth, cold vial. She gives you a weird look, a weird look like, why aren't you suddenly up on me? On, but she doesn't notice the theft. I suppose I'll, I'll be. And if I, I were you, I'll be more mindful of who I'll choose to associate myself with the future. You see, by to her, feeling the tiniest bit guilty, but she's planning to use this poison to do more to your theater in her prison basement. So you don't feel that bad. Take care now. And she looks normal now. Adair looks and Boulder takes an inquisitive step closer. Psst, show me. You open your hands to spy the spiders, flushed with criminal and fear. Oh, oh, hell no. You grab the wrong fucking vial. This one's blue, not red. You grab the antidote, it's not the poison. God, he honestly thought you were moving past these kinds of cock-ups. Oh, damn. Well, at least you have an antidote now. You'll never know when one of those might come in handy. She sways forward and clutches her neck. For one confused second, you think she's doing an impression of someone who might need an antidote, then falls to her knees. Then you dart for it and catch her before she can totally eat it. She's heavier than she looks. Compact muscle and a coat full of ungodly number of weapons. She has like four guns in there. What the hell? Her arms are f full, and you can only watch helplessly as a troll in the a hood that covers their face and their horns books out the door. You shout that some fucker just stabbed your friend, but. Nobody here is looking at you. It's just the same. It's just the same people. A way people on Earth might ignore a mother trying to calm a toddler throwing a tantrum, just turning their eyes away from the distasteful public scene. Now, oh, damn it! You put it. You put a hand to Boulder's neck, trying to scotch the bleeding, but there isn't a bleeding. Littered, you pull apart the lapels of her coat to see a single drop of olive blood, trembling down her olive collarbone. Discoloration sp spreads in the dark spill of her neck, radiating down her chest. You both say at the same time. Poison. You open your hand to look at the tiny blue vial, then back a boulder. Her eyes are glassy, her skin is going blotchy and ashen. There's no reason to believe that Adria's poison and the poison that Sasha used are the same, with the same antidote. It already strains the powers of coincidence, and you grab the antidote after all. 
exactly right. Maybe you should try it anyway. I can't feel my legs. Right, er, right, right. The immediate, the mere fact that this is such an unlikely happenstance means it'll be the right answer. Everything you've done so far had the pull of inevitability, inevitability to it, especially all of your interactions with Holder. Right, awesome. Glad you're realizing your inherent significance to this particular mechanism of causation. Now you can please pour that stuff into my mouth so I can swallow it and possibly not die. Milt Boulder tip her head back and put the vial into her lips. Last minute you wonder if the if it's supposed to be diluted, but Boulder gulps and the whole the whole thing down and immediately begins to shake. Smoke blows out of her nostrils and mouth and holy shit, what the heck is going on? It doesn't seem like this this doesn't seem like any type of antidote to you. But then the smoke clears and Boulder, Boulder opens her eye, big yellow eyes. How does she feel? Alive? Marginally. She lets you help her to your feet. You immediately pull her up into a fierce yet gentle hug. It's a while to undergo someone else's near-death experience. You manage to like- You feel like you know her way better than one montage seems worth. Another new friend. Oof, not so tight. Wheeze up a little. Uh, all the tea sippers are staring at you now. Death apparently isn't interesting, but the possibility of some quadrant chasing stuff they are suddenly all about. Sorry, asshole. Just you and your new friend sharing a touching post new fate of encounter. Nothing to see here. Season tie! Huzzah! Uh, I guess let's go. No more climb, please. You got her already got a hell of a rap sheet. Maybe it'd be best not to add any new skills that could lead you into temptation. Fair enough. Would you care to go for a stroll? It's a nice night. It's a windy, unsettled night, and it looks like rain. I suppose that's nice, depending on your definition. We yeah, absolutely love to take a stroll. That's your whole vibe recently, sh strolling. You follow her out through a little back gate into the street. You leave the cafe behind and quickly consumed by the drift of the midnight crowd. You brace for the inevitable, pitying, hostile looks you get whenever you're out in public. You should have mentioned that you try to avoid large groups, but strangely, no one even glances at you. It's like Boulders extrudes a sneaky aura that encompasses the both of you. As you walk, you ask her if she really believes in fate, like the two of you were always going to meet and nothing could have happened any differently no matter what you did. Boulder gives you a thoughtful sidelong glance. Well, that would imply that none of our choices matter and that casualty is inevitable. That randomness is irrelevant, right? Uh, sure. You scamper to keep up with her, both both physically and mentally. For someone who asks you to take a shoal, she sure is booking it down the streets. But that disregards our choices. Fate dictates that all possibilities are, by their very nature, consistent. Or rather, the choice you made was the only one you ever could make. I doubt the universe is that simple. This doesn't sound simple to you, but you hum and nod. Sagely, because you want Bowler to think you're deep. Instead of asking me, asking yourself whether you're meant to, be, meant to be here, it makes more sense to wonder what the forces are that conspired to bring it into being. Hmm. Well, it would be exhaustion and impetune. You don't exactly remember what happened, but you were sure it involved something stupid like falling asleep at the wheel and drifting off into another solar system. But in roughly 48 hours, you know? A lot of escaping and running and punching and stealing high power vehicles. Yes, of course. I understand. All of these work. Or in night's work. <laughs> she stops you at, the, at most intersections as she takes a su super titious glances around the corner before gesturing you forward. Every so often, she will turn to the, the two of you around to double back. You're not exactly sure why. Maybe she thinks you're being followed, but who would follow you from the cafe? Of all sorts. Don't worry, I know how to shake off a tail. You cross one of the main thoroughfares, a big black board sweeps at your he heads. You yelp and duck, but when you look around, you see that the bird has landed on Boulder's arm, and she's stroking its back. You brace yourself for it to start talking, or some shit like that, because that's where your life is like now. But it just takes its leg out for Boulder to remove a scrap of paper. 
He waits patiently for her to read the message and then scribbles something on the back before attaching it to the crow and throwing it back into the air. Man, some Harry Potter shit. All my informants want a rendezvous in mid space. Unusual, but it has been an unusual day. Unusual couple of months, apparently, honestly. Yes, of course. You have had it, had it much harder than I have. How was I thinking? Well, you're trying not to get it into a contest of whose life sucks more, but yeah, it's been rough. You appreciate that, you can see that. Of all the planets to be forced to, Materia as well. Not ideal. Not the worst, but you still have my sympathies. Is there anything at all you'd like about it? What, about Ateria? Well, you're kind of digging this whole night as day thing. You're a durnurial dur species, but you've always had a bit of a night owl. Also, not to brag, but you also made some seriously cool friends. Yes, I've been following your exploits. The friendship acquisition procedures are really quite impressive. Aw, now you're blushing. You ask Boulder her now she, uh, how she knows that much about your exploits because not only is pretty recently that you sort of real social media presence. I suppose she could have Google alert like Maledic did, but click around here. Boulder leads you into a deserted lot between two buildings. There's nothing here except some broken bottles and a pile of old rubber tires. She leaves you behind the tire power to keep watch, although she is probably just doing it to get you out of the way. Which, there. Then she heads out of the center of the lot, presumably to wait for a contact. You sit here twiddling your thumbs, trying to suppress the desire to pull out your phone. That doesn't seem very covert ops. You're just starting to get really angsty, jutting your leg and cracking your knuckles and digging a little hole in their dirt with a stick. When you hear something strange beneath the wind, a swoosh followed by a thunk. But do a boulder jerks and clutches your neck. You writhe up from your rubber pile, send sending tires flying. You look up wildly at the surrounding buildings, trying to find out where the projectile came from. You don't see anyone, not even a lone gunman. You run for your new friend, not spending a th uh, thought for your own safety. The clouds move overhead like someone has put them out and uh, put them on fast forward. Put them on fast forward. The wind rattling the trash on the pavement. At the time you reach Boulder, she has begun to twitch in hard spasms. One look at the blotchy stain spreading across her chest, and there's no doubt you both stay at the same time. Poison. You fall to your knees beside her. Oh god, what are you supposed to do? You don't know anything about poisons or first aid or anything useful. God, why are you such a fucking waste of space? You could have just been gaining some life skills. Instead, you're just loafing around like a complete idiot, you. Stop. Don't. There isn't time. Stuff acts fast. Oda takes hard, grasping breaths between each word. Her hands are growing cloudy. She makes a desperate grab for your hands. Listen. For the first time, her voice rises above a whisper. Her grip is surprisingly strong. You tell her to save her strength, but she shakes her head so hard that her hat, hat falls off. It's not, I'm not important. You tell her to stop being, you know, stop being dramatic. Of course she's important. I'm not being dramatic. Well, maybe a little because I'm dying. But still, remember what I said about fate. Fuck fate, you don't want anything to do with it. If this is the kind of shit it's going to pull on you. So maybe your friends have died because of you. Maybe of your incredible inability to, to. The world trysts and stutters. Your guts are, re are a record and that record is skipping. For a moment you're sure that whoever is that poison shooting bastard is shot too. But then your vision clears and you feel the rain on the back of your neck. The world is rolling back to you in waves of color and sound. The dark sky splits open on a fault line of lightning. Odora's hands go limp in your own. With shaking fingers, you reach out to touch her motionless cheek. Fuck. Fuck! Not again, why? An uncontrollable wave of despair washes over you as you look down at the corpse of this girl you barely know. You. Where are all of these feelings coming from? There's... There's honestly too many of them. Why are they... And 
loss of a friend. Again? Again, must I do everything myself? Backyards are as bad as basements, no way. Okay, listen, you've done some pretty dumb stuff since you crash landed here. For instance, following the woman standing in front of you into your basement, but not this time. Nice, nice try, Catfisher. Important correspondence. Nah, you crumbled the piece of paper, the paper up in your hand. Nothing that can't wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good, impeccable timing. Just what I was hoping you would say. Friend blocked. <laughs> With that, we're going to end this episode here. I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your life, and may the stars forever guide your path wherever it might lead you into the future. Bye-bye.